and staff now, people that he's coached with or played for him, and taking care of those guys once they're done. And really, we can't do anything for him besides keep working for him, and he's taking care of us even though he didn't have to. And how long did it take you to, to, to be around him and know him before you realized, hey, this guy, this guy's going to go somewhere, this guy's going to be a head coach? Well, I think probably before I ever met him. I mean, when I, I, I first worked for him in Georgia, but you can kind of tell, as, obviously, as his talent as a defensive coach initially, obviously as a recruiter, winning recruiter of the year as an assistant, but also within the first 10 minutes of meeting him, his personality and being down to earth and such a, just a good person, you can tell that he's going to go somewhere. Coach, sorry if you were asked this before. What's the next step for Dominic Wood Anderson? Being consistent every day. I mean, he's just working, you know, like everybody else, and just being consistent day in and day out, you know, and obviously getting better and moving forward. There's no big step or anything, you know. We just focus on every day getting better, you know, step by step. What have you seen from Austin Pope now that he's kind of finally healthy after battling injury all last season? Um, for us, uh, Austin is, you know, obviously a good player. I think getting back in the groove of things has been huge for him, you know, getting back from injury. Um, you know, he had a lot of talent uh, out of high school, and he's been hampered by injury. And I just look forward to him contributing to our room and, and really helping us in this next season. Where does Jacob's going after just you know, getting bigger and being able to play with kind of physicality and needs in this league? Jacob's gained quite a few pounds since he's been here. He's, he's you know, moved along. He's made great strides in some things. You know, I think Jacob is, is a great guy overall. I think as a teammate, as, as a player, he's going to be a good player. Um, but overall, I think he's doing the things he has to do to, to progress in our room. You know, Jackson Lowe, is, is he kind of inserted himself into, into at least, you know, competing to try to get on the field? Obviously, this is a big spring for his development and arriving. It is. Early. It is. And it's great that he's here. Obviously, you know, the guy's supposed to be going to prom, and I think he's getting better each day. I think any kid that comes in mid-year, it's a shock at first because, I mean, at the end of the day, you're playing at a whole different level than you were in high school. But he's done wonderful things. You know, obviously, each day, he's just progressing. Um, you know, obviously tight end is such a place that it's hard to it maybe as physically demanding as any position on the field with all the different things that you have to do and the mental component. Mm -hmm. When you're recruiting people, how do you even begin to start kind of finding people who, who could maybe, if not all of, at least match a lot of those things that you need for that spot? You know, obviously you have height, weight, size, combinations, and then rare abilities, you know, be it, be it blocking or, you know, receiving. And then also the mental component, you know, how, how does this guy understand things? How fast does he learn? You know, so you just go on obviously physically first, watching film, things like that, and then, you know, once you meet him in person, engaging that, you know. Is it tough to find, you know, sometimes if, like if a guy's really good at running routes and catching the ball, his high school might play him as a wide receiver, or, you know, if he's a bigger guy, maybe he plays on the line of scrimmage somewhere. How tough is it to, to see where a guy transitions into, because I know a lot of times you have to take guys that play different spots and move them to tight end and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's always project, projecting no matter when you're uh, recruiting kids in high school, you know, a lot of wide receivers will play DB, you know, DBs will end up playing wide receivers, quarterbacks to DB, different things, you know, defensive ends, linebackers, it's all about projecting um, sometimes, and, and that's a risk you take, but you just try to make the best thing, uh, the best case scenario for yourself. Coach, we're asking you here about all these players and where they are, how much more prepared are you this year as a Assistant coach. Oh, man. Tennessee's a big no, I, I, start, I feel great. Out. I think just with the offense and, and Jim Chaney and, you know, under his guidance and Jeremy Pruitt, and there's a guy here last year uh, named John Lilly who's now the tight ends coach of the Browns, and he played a big role in mentoring me and, you know, my understanding of different things uh, within the offense, and I'm eternally grateful to him for that. Coach, you describe the experience of being a first time off field coach? It's good. No, it's good. I think, uh, you know, obviously you're fortunate and you're blessed. You're in a conference that everybody really wants to be in. And um, anytime you can be a position coach, you know, one of the 10 on field guys, I think it's a blessing more than anything. And you just are, are fortunate and you're happy every day about it. Brian, coach coach Rump just said uh, he's seen a more relaxed Jeremy Pruitt in year two. How have you kind of seen Coach Pruitt evolve in his second year? Well, I think, you know, anytime, just like myself, you go from year one to year two is the biggest growth. Um, at any any new job, um, but I think he's, you know, consistently done a great job as being our head football coach, Tennessee.
you've gotten some accolades for uh, recruiting. Uh, you've been National Recruiter of the Year in one service. What makes you specifically an effective recruiter? Because knowing, obviously, you have a great university to recruit for. I think, uh, again, man, I'm telling you, just with the staff you have, because none of the guys, you know, besides the two tight ends, are going to play for me. So recruiting those guys without great position coaches, great coordinators, and great head coach, none of them are coming here. So I don't think it ever specifically relies on me. I don't think there's any reason for me specifically to have won an accolade because of our staff or anything. I'm, I'm just one small cog in the Tennessee staff, and I truly believe that. So How would you describe coaching within a Jim Cheney offense? Uh, he's an, I would say he's a multiple pro-style offense. He can really do anything. He's been so creative over his career. Looking back at when he was previously at Tennessee, you know, when he was at Arkansas, Georgia, Pitt, just looking at his, his body of work over time, he's done so many different things. He's really comfortable in doing anything. The changes in the recruiting calendar over the last couple of years had some obvious effects with everybody signing in December and the visit schedule and stuff like that. What are some of the other less obvious changes y'all have had in terms of y'all's recruiting approach, had to do in terms of your recruiting approach since this? I mean, just with the calendar, you're just accelerating a little bit. That's that's really it. I mean, you, you talk about guys taking visits sooner and things like that and, and really being able to, um, you know, get kids on campus sooner and make a connection and things like that. But that's really about it. Just make it tougher in terms of evaluation. Oh, uh, you know, yes and no. You kind of figure it out along the way. I mean, it's all new for everybody. So, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all equal across country. When you see how physical Georgia was running the ball under Cheney, does that get you and, and your unit kind of excited to go oh, out absolutely. there and trust some people around? Absolutely. I uh, obviously we want to be a physical point of attack, you know, group at tight end. And we, we possess the ability to do that. So continuing to get better in and, and his system day in and day out is what we're focused on. Where have you seen Dom develop the most since the end of last season? Consistency. It's about being consistent every day in and day out. You have to have a great day every day moving forward. Got time for two more? From, mm -hmm. from Alaska, you've been all over the place, sort of. You know, just the, the way you've sort of worked your way up, you know, how, how has that kind of shaped the way you are as a coach? Has that changed anything about you? Or, you know? Well, um, growing up in Alaska is a, is a different experience. But for me, I think going to all these different places, I think you experience a lot of different things. You see a lot of different cultures. You see a lot of different ways that people do things. I think for me, it, it helps me relate to different people um, differently, you know, than I normally would if I was, you know, born and raised and stayed in one place and was there the whole time. So for me, I think I was very lucky to, to experience so many things in, in so many parts of the country. Last question. Do you feel like being a guy from Alaska that you know, was able to kind of get down to the lower 48 and do some things that I don't want to say responsibility, but that you can maybe show some of those kids over there that you know you work hard, you, you can find a way to, to make a life in this game. Well, I think that you know anybody that wants to be a football coach, if if you work at it, it's almost about attrition more than anything. I think if you just try hard enough for as you know as long as you can and. And again, but I was very fortunate. I was in the right situation at the right time. Uh, I consider myself lucky, you know, above all. I think any time that somebody is, is put in this situation at such a young age, you know, there has to be some luck involved, uh, especially coming from my situation growing up in Alaska with no, you know, no real background in our family in the sport. All right.